All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the Fourier transform in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying, what is the Fourier transform? Why do we need it? How does it work? And jump straight into a coding example. So at the end of this video, we will understand what this image here on the right means. OK, so what is Fourier transform? Uh, the idea is it converts a 2D image into frequency domain. So a typical image we see, we count that as a time domain, and then this image here on the bottom is what we call the frequency domain image. So why do we need the Fourier transform? One of the main things you could use it for is for filtering and also data compression, because you could actually express your image with just very little detail, as we will see later on. So how does the Fourier transform work? If you recall, in a digital or signal processing class, every signal could be expressed as a combination of cosine and sine. So that's all compacted inside the exponential function. And then with discrete signal, there is some um, difference in terms of how much the frequency can go up to. There's a limited range. We won't go into the details of that. But the idea is for discrete time signals, um, you're going to have the period periodicity issues in terms of like how it repeats itself. So uh, the idea is you'll convert this into frequency domain by finding your coefficients. Um, your coefficients or the frequencies, you're going to find all the frequencies that will show up for the different signals. And then there's what's called the inverse DFT, which will take your uh, frequency signal and then convert it back into your time domain. Okay, So you could do some operations in the frequency domain and then uh, convert it back to your time domain. Okay, so we'll see it in code example. So without further ado, let's jump into the coding. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and uh, read in some of our uh, modules. Let's close this out. Okay, so we're going to import cv2 as cv, and then import numpy as np, and import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt and then import os. Okay, so these are our main modules and then we're going to call a function called for a transform here. And then we're going to have our if uh, name equals main. And that's going to be our Fourier transform. OK, so now that we have that all set up, um, the main first thing we're going to do is start reading our image. So we have root uh, equals ls.path or os.getcwd. And then we have our image path equals os.path.join. Then I'll pass in root. Um, demo images tesla.jpg and our image is going to be cv.amread and we're going to pass it in as a grayscale okay now we can start plotting it so plt.figure and then plt.subplot uh, 231 and then plt.amshow I'm going to pass in the image and then cmap of gray and then plt.show here. Now if I go ahead and run this, we should see our image being plotted. Um, here I need to pass in my image path. That's why it's not happy. Now if I pass it in, you see our grayscale image. Okay, so now what we want to do is do some DFT. So we're going to call this image dft equals cv, and the function is called dft conveniently. And we're going to cast it to a float 32. And then the flags that we'll use here is going to be cv.dft uh, complex output. So this just tells us how we're, um, it's going to be a complex number, real and imaginary. So it's just telling us how we're outputting that. And then image, we're going to convert this to decibels to uh, attenuate the signal to make it easier to see the relative difference. So we have np.log, 
and we're going to use the magnitude function to um, find the find the signal in decibels. So we're going to pass an image uh, DFT here, and then uh, the first layer, and then do the same thing, and now with the second layer. And I have my plt dot subplot here, two three two, and then plt dot um show, and image uh, DFT here, and plot it in decibels, and then C map of gray. So if I go ahead and plot this, we should see our signal in decibels. So notice that all the bright regions are on the outside. So before we do any shifting, the low low frequency low frequency signals are actually on the outsides of this image. So um, usually to make the image more interpretable, people will use the um, F FFT shift function to shift it so that the low frequency is in the center. So I'm going to call this image DFT shifts. And we're going to use the mpfft.fft uh, shift function here and then pass in our image dft. Now if I have my image dft uh, shift in decibels, uh, we're going to do pretty much the same thing here that we did. So I'm just going to copy paste this. Main difference being here, instead of dft, you're going to do dft shift. So that's our... Uh, shift diversion in decibels, and then we'll do the same plotting it. So plt dot subplot uh, two three three, and plt dot um show. I'm gonna pass in uh, the shifted decibels. Now, if I go ahead and run this, we should see our shifted decibels. Uh, I need to add in the C map. Not required, but for this, I am just plotting it in grace in grayscale. Okay, so now you can see a very bright region in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna do some uh, masking to we're gonna apply a low pass filter in frequency domain, and then we'll see how that works. So first off, I'm gonna have my rows and columns um, using the image shape, and then. Well, I'm going to apply a mask, so mask of mp dot zeros of rc2 and then mp dot um, uint8. So I'm making this of depth 2 because um, my image dft here has some real imaginary layers. So that's why I'm doing that. And then I'm going to have some offset value of 50 here. And our mask. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to set the area that we want to be 1. So mask of um, int r divided by 2 minus the offset to int r divided by 2 plus the offset. And similarly, we're going to have int columns divided by 2 minus the offset to uh, int column divided by 2 plus the offset. So basically what we're saying is we're going to take the center region plus 50 minus 50 in the x and y direction and set those pixels to 1. So I'm going to do plt dot subplot here and then do a 2, 3, 4 and then plt dot um show to see the mask. Uh, because our mask have two layers, uh, for plotting purposes I will just plot one of the layers. So if I go ahead and run this, we will see our mask for one layer, which is just a tiny area. So the idea is we will have this tiny little mask that will apply to this in frequency domain. So we're essentially saying we just want to keep the low pass or low frequency region of the image. Okay, so now to actually apply the low pass filter, what we want to do is do image uh, DFT shift. I'm going to call this LP for low pass. So you get the image DFT shift, and then you times the mask. And then if you convert it to decibels, image DFT shift, um, call this LP decibels. I'm going to copy this because I don't want to type it out. 
And then the only difference is now you have my LP shift here. Okay, so that's that. And then plt dot subplot, I have my two, three, five, and then plt dot um, show. I'm gonna plot my image LP decibels C map of gray. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this. We should see our tiny bright region. So that's the tiny bright region that we're keeping. Okay, so let's see. There's a divide by zero error here. So uh, usually when you see a divide by zero error, you could um, fix it by offsetting your values by one. So let's see. Here we may not have to worry about it since it's still plotting, but in practice, if you see that problem, you could um, try adding, shift all your values by some increment and that should solve it. But let's just move forward with that because it's plotting. And then we have our image, the inverse uh, DFT now for our low pass. It's gonna be MP dot FFT I, FFT dot I, uh, FFT shift. And we're gonna pass in our image, DFT shift, our low pass. So we're doing the inverse shifting here. And then now we do image, DFT, low pass. So that we're gonna get by using the inverse uh, DFT. And we'll pass in our image, inverse DFT, low pass. And then finally our image applied with the low pass filter apply, it's gonna be CV dot uh, magnitude. And then here we have uh, image, DFT low pass. And then we're gonna use colon colon to get the first layer and then image DFT low pass, colon colon and then the first layer. Here I'm missing a comma. Okay, so that's our low pass. And then to see the image, we're gonna do subplots two, three, six, and then plt dots um, show, and then image uh, low pass here, and then pass in C map of gray. So what this will do is show us our resultant image after applying low pass filter back into the frequency domain. So this also demonstrates image compression because this tiny little area in frequency domain is actually representing this image here on the right that's been uh, essentially Gaussian blurred or just low pass filter, general um, low pass filtering. Okay, so that's the magic of Fourier transform. And to wrap it up, I wanna talk a little bit about interpreting um, certain filters here. So specifically, let's take a quick look at the Gaussian and Laplacian um, filter. So I'm gonna create my coefficients and this will give us a good understanding of why the Gaussian and Laplacian is a low and high pass filter based on the plots that we get. So here we do a get uh, Gaussian kernel here and we'll pass in seven five for the values. Um, Gaussian, I'm gonna call Gaussian kernel as my variable name and coefficients times the uh, coefficient transpose. This will give me my kernel. And my, my Laplacian kernel, I'm gonna use just a three by three version. So here we have a zero, one, zero. And then next one will be one, negative four, one. And then you have zero, one, zero. Okay, so that's our Laplacian kernel. And then we have, let me scroll this up a little bit. Now we're gonna do our figure, a new figure to plot it. So plt dot subplot here, uh, one, two, one. And we have our Gauss FFT equals np dot FFT dot FFT two. And we're gonna pass in our Gaussian kernel. Then our Gauss FFT shift is gonna be np dot FFT dot FFT uh, T shift here. 
and pass in our Gauss f of t. And then our magnitude is going to be np.log. And we can do np.absolute, uh, pass in our Gaussian shift, and then plus 1. So that's the example of avoiding the divide by zeros. And plt.um show is going to be uh, our Gauss magnitude, and then cmap equals gray. And similarly, we could do this for the um, other one. I'm going to copy paste this. And instead of uh, Gauss, we're going to use uh, the plus. And this one is called the Poisson kernel. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we should see our plots one for the Gaussian and one for the FFT, or I mean, one for Laplacian and one for Gaussian. So you can see with the Gaussian, it's a bright uh, pixel in the middle, so all, it's all low frequency. And then for the Laplacian, it's bright on the outside and dark on the inside, which uh, signals or tells us that this is a high pass filter. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.